got some big Bertha CF19s there, Daniel son. Big whoppers, aren't they? They are chunky monkeys. So we're going to review them, see what they can do for players of our speed, talk about what they might do for other players of different speed. Can yeah. they put these in the high handicapper bracket? Yeah, I will talk about that. Yeah, we'll okay. talk about that. Big Bertha CF19 Iron Stroke Hybrid. Even though this is a separate product, again, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Let's see what they can do. Let's get stuck in. So we're going to start by collecting some data with the 6 iron. We've also been outside and played with these as well, which we'll yeah. show you. We're going to show you the numbers that we collect as well at the end of the video. First initial thoughts down as you look down at it. It's got this kind of darker finish. Yeah, I like that sort of slate grey finish, isn't it? It's mm. quite nice looking. Um, uh, when you talked to me about these before, I thought, oh, these are going to be really chunky again. Here we go again. But actually, I think they've done a fantastic job with this. They've really slimlined it down. Uh, it can appeal to a lot of people, I think. And I think the dark finish helps play into that slightly smaller look. And it definitely isn't the chunkiest looking club that I've ever seen in my life. No. But in theory, it's going to perform like a chunky club, is what they say. Well out. That's yeah. your high hand shot, another, is it? Should we have another go? <laughs> How's that feeling, sound-wise, inside, before we go outside? Yeah, feel is nice. Um... Quite clicky, isn't it? It's clicky. It's not. It's not as tinny as what I've felt in the past by some of these uh, chunky big birth of chunky uh, Callaway irons. So, yeah, first impressions are a quite a nice feel. Okay. Well, let's see what Callaway say about these clubs. The Big Bertha C19 irons from Callaway, they've got a suspended energy core in this club, which is what Callaway is saying. So basically there is tungsten weight in the back here that's kind of suspended off the face. Uh, I think it's surrounded by urethane possibly, it all gets very technical. Basically it's going to deliver high launching irons, high launching clubs to try and give you more distance. And then by surrounding it by this urethane as well, it's going to help with the sound, keep the sound from being far too clicky, those kind of ideas. 360 cup face on this one as well, so that's basically kind of almost like a channel that runs all the way around the outside of the club. That's allowing them to have these thinner faces, give you better ball speed control across different strike points on the face. Because think about it, if you're moving away from the, street, uh, the sweet spot, and you strike and that ball speed drops off, the ball doesn't go as far, so you're going to have bigger dispersions, sh uh, short and long. Uh, the 360 cup face is all there, again, to try and minimise the drop-offs when you're not hitting in the centre of that club. Callaway is saying it's got this smoked PVD finished, classy, does look very good. Also, I think it helps reduce the look of the size of the club, which is only a good thing trying to keep it... It's, well, classic looking is maybe not fair, but better looking for something that is going to be game improving and trying to help you. Now the hybrid in the Big Bertha comes with jailbreak. We get jailbreak technology, which is these two bars. You can see the bottom of them here. They're connecting the bottom of the head to the top, trying to keep it firmer across the face. Again, keeping ball speeds up across the face is the idea with those. There's a hyper speed face cup. Also, ultra-thin face in these hybrids, again, trying to keep ball speeds as maxing from the middle and up against different parts of that face. We get the new OptiFit hosel. So the OptiFit hosel is going to change lie and loft, uh, while at the same time now what we get is a smaller, stuntier uh, hosel compared to the driver one that I think they used to put into the hybrids because they want to keep the centre of gravity of this club low. If you go and put a long hosel on this, it moves way up the, up the shaft, moves the centre of gravity higher on it. Um, so by keeping this stuntier hosel on this allows that centre of gravity for them just to keep it low, because you've got to remember jailbreak put some more weight near the top of the club as well. So they're doing everything saving weight to try and make sure they can pull that weight down and back and give you higher launches. And in turn, in theory, a bit more distance. And with the irons and with the hybrid, you get premium shafts, you can get fit to whatever shaft grip options you want, obviously, for all the shaftoids out there. Really, what Callaway are saying with these clubs in the Big Bertha iron and hybrid, it's about distance, it's about friendly, it's about trying to give you as much chance as you can to get the most out of your shots. So we've got a six iron we're hitting. We've got one. the KBS and it's in Stiflex 90 gram max shaft. Okay, excellent. And it's just a standard length club as such. Standard length, yeah. Yep. 
Right, so I'm going to capture some numbers too before we show you what happened outside. It's got that little bit of offset. It's very good looking. As chunky clubs go, I could see this appealing to a lot of people who want a club to look a certain way and look quite nice. I like the dark finish. It's not massive uh, on the top line. There's some nice straight edges to it. Quite a long face and you've got to not be too scared of offset. I mean, Callaway did this iron or versions of this iron years ago. I think sometimes people, I know Callaway do have their kind of critics, like all the top companies do, but I mean I remember the big birth rhymes when they first came out. Remember the really chunky ones? Yeah, big I mean, square ones. They were so ahead of their time. Mm. I mean I was playing amateur golf. In Devon Amateur I played with a set of those years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they certainly are not afraid to go ahead and innovate and do something different. Um, this is obviously our kind of similar ideas but trying to deliver the better looks. Now I'm going to put this out there looking at this club. That's got to be one of the best looking chunk and I know, I know what the numbers are going to be like on this. It's going to be low spinning bombals. Yeah. But for a low spinning bombals iron. It's as good as anything isn't it's it? It's looking great isn't it? Yeah. Sound wise it clips for me, does what I expect, you know, it makes that noise, um, you know, all the tech inside, there's a lot of tech talk for what's going inside here, but basically we've got very low centre of gravity, back a bit off the face, cut face they've been doing for a while, obviously trying to keep that spring up across all the faces, all great, and I'm sure it does what it needs to do. Um, I'm just seeing, feeling quite a long, low lofted six iron here that does pop up in the air. I feel like I could absolutely smash this if I wanted to. For me, the, the feel off the face, in the past they've been almost feeling a bit hollow. Yeah, this feels less. And this less. one definitely feels less, would you say yeah, that? maybe or? I would get close to that, yeah. Well let's see what happened when we went out on the golf course. We've got the hybrid as well, I'm going to show you the numbers when we come back. So 526 par 5, we're going to start with the hybrid, so it's the 19 degree, we're going to show you the numbers back inside later, let's see if we can play this hole with these clubs and how we get on, they're quite powerful, so I reckon we won't be far off in two with this. 18 degree. Slightly overdrawn or perfect? Yeah, a bit overdrawn for this club. Toey or you did that? I reckon that was... Right there, I yeah. feel. So that's the beauty and so roll and bulge when you start getting to a longer club is just so great. It really helps, I personally think. Lovely. Great shot that. Thank you. Looks nice. I mean, it's a lot of club down by the ball, but it feels nice. Gives you confidence, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So Dan's just off the fairway, but he's still brandishing the hybrid. Yeah, I'm gonna hit I'm gonna hit this. Because you still feel you can get there with that? Well, I think, uh, yeah, I think I can get it r roughly front edge. Yeah, absolutely. So the lie you're feeling is fine, even out the yeah. semi with that I think I've got face. more. I think I've got more help, going to get more help with the hybrid out of this little bit of rough than I possibly am with those irons. So, yeah, I like that. Right, what are you going to do here? So I've got an eight iron, and that is a lot of iron down by the ball. I mean, they almost feel, I mean, it's just long, isn't it? It's mm. a lot of longness. Some of the best I've seen when it comes to chunky, there's a lot of face down there. It looks nice, so I'm going to go eight iron run. You've done well getting yours on the front from the semi there. Yeah, it's it? come out nice, isn't it? Nice hot runner. Feel off the face, that's a good shot. A little long, I was yeah. in more than that. Oh, it's still going. Still going, well, uh, I mean, it's greens. just, I don't think there's any problem. Apart from what you want to look at, when it comes to chip shots with clubs like this, I, I, in the tests we do, I don't, because I, 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 you're in it soft, I don't think there's any issue at all. I think no. you can play whatever you need to play. I think with a couple of a couple of chips, you'd soon get used you'd to that. You'd adapt, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? So Dan's going to try a time run as well. So I use these shots a lot, so. And down by the ball looks fine. Looks absolutely fine to me. I think they've done a great job with this, this set, to be honest. Ooh. 
Yeah, it's a nice shot. It comes in from the left from that side, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It banks off off that left edge, yeah. Yeah, nice shot. That was nice. Felt good. So, a tying 153, probably 160 to the flag, actually. Yeah. Slightly out the toe, how's it gonna do? Yeah, middle of the green, we'll get up there and show you that. This is kind of your number with an eight iron? Yeah, with this eight iron. Yeah. Which is basically a seven iron. A seven iron, yeah. I like the white score lines to the black face as well. Yeah, it helps to frame it, doesn't it, a yeah. little bit? A little bit up the right side. Right, right. I was expecting you to try and draw that one in. Yeah, not bad at all. Up the right side, yeah. We're fine, it's gonna show. So, I'm just up the right side here, middle of the green. Dan just caught his slightly toey, so he's kind of a bit left and middle of the green for the quality of strikes. Pretty good again. the hybrid just collecting the numbers as well. Now with the hybrid it's the irons go up to a four iron so you could just go a set of the irons. The hybrid is an add-on it's a different product but it's in the same family if that makes sense. Um, we're seeing jailbreak in the hybrid mm -hmm. and we're seeing the new design of the hosel so it's not as long because they're trying to not get it too much weight at the top. It's squatty isn't it? Yeah that? so if you think about the old hosel or the hosel on the driver it's longer. Yeah. So you've got weight coming up the shaft, which is going to move the centre of gravity of the whole thing higher. Yeah. You've got to remember, jailbreak pushes a little bit of weight higher. Yeah. Because you've got bars that are going connecting to the top of the face. So they're trying to, I think it's a new jailbreak and it's a smaller hosel to try and make sure that that weight doesn't go high and they can keep it low. Yeah. What do you think of the shape of that? It doesn't, uh, it's not too offensive that. It's quite, it's quite, it's quite large and it's like you can see the face, it's quite high toe. I, they've always done that little bit of high toe, isn't it? Which has not really appealed to me, but this one seems nicer. I think I could place, it's kind of a combo. If you're coming from a wood, like a five wood into a hybrid, I would say that this could really work. If you're coming maybe from irons into a hybrid, it starts to get quite big. So you're moving more into maybe a, a wood look. Well, that's say. interesting you say that. I always think they're high. I know what you're saying about the bigness, but the high toe and the shapes of their hybrids, sure. they often make me feel like people who like playing irons more would okay. like this because it looks less to me like a wood because of that toe. Yeah. It's not as rounded and curved. Because you think about an iron, an iron's got a high toe, isn't it? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a triangular shape and it feels to me more like it's going for people who maybe want. I can the iron looks, you know what I mean? That yeah, face, I can see what you're saying. And also, about and also this sort of really squared off yeah. um, grooves, should we say, or painted marks on the face. It's much more iron -esque It is. Me. Probably what I'm looking at is more of this sort of bigger back, chunky. chunky at the yeah. top here, maybe looking down from a wood effect, should yeah. we say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They tried to move away from this changing hosel in a couple of products okay. maybe last year or the year before and I, it's good to see that they've brought that back to give yeah. everyone that maneuverability a little Absolutely. bit hybrid tested is a three hybrid uh, we've got it in neutral settings we've got the recoil esx 460 f4 shaft in this for any of the shaftoids out there I mean, I hear what you're saying, a lot of face down by the ball. I always think you see a lot of rolling bowls on their clubs as well, because the steps on the top are so curved, you start seeing them yeah. almost as the face. Mm. I, I, would, I, could ease, I could game any hybrid I personally think, because I just like them, because they've the loft set at the right angle for me. Um, these are not my favourite looking ones out of all the hybrids that are made. I just don't want it to be quite as brutal looking as this. Yeah. When you say brutal looking, are you talking more the size of it? The toe looks like it's been stung by a wasp. So it's just like... It's throbbing, uh, isn't it? it? It's ballooned on you. <laughs> throbbing. <laughs> they, are, they are definitely unique in their design of hybrids, aren't they, Cali? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to me, that's so iron-esque as well. It makes me want to get more upright. Mm. Well, I'm always happier for my hybrid to be closer on wood. You want it to be closer to a wood. Yeah. yeah. 
the way it sits, the way it looks, the roundedness of it, the way yeah. it falls off the back. I'm the same as you with that because obviously coming from a five wood into a hybrid for me. Yeah, and I, I went that route as well. You came from that, yeah. So I played five wood as an amateur all day long, and then obviously we changed the hybrid. And I think that's important for guys when they're coming from woods is to sort of really focus on maybe a slightly bigger looking hybrid. Yeah. I like the amount of face down by the ball on this. I think a lot of people will like that. Yeah. It will look, they'll give them a little bit more confidence. Friendly, yeah. yeah friendly looking. So if we look at the six iron, your 185 carry, mm -hmm. I'm 181, my highest is 184, yeah. your furthest is 189. Now you did have the duff in there, number shot number one, which I've taken out because that <laughs> only went 110 yards. <laughs> so it kind of shows you as well, which I like, because I always get confused when people say things like, um, yeah, but your good hitters of the ball, you should get amateurs testing. When you move a certain amount away from the sweet spot, the club's going to do nothing. Yeah. It just can't help you. Um, and we're missing the sweet spot enough. Look at the ball speeds that you're getting. So if we look at the ball speed, you're 123, 125, 126, up to 127. That's yeah. not hitting in the same spot every time. Yeah. Um, and if you went much further away from the middle there, the drop-off would be equal if you were a 17 handicapper to a pro to anyone. It's one of those things I think people just get a little bit confused on. I'll do more on that. Um, peak height for you, 33. Peak height for me, 31. So no problem getting the ball up in the air. So spinning for me, 4,500. Yeah. My five iron spins around the number of the club to 500 less. Yeah. Five iron spin, five iron numbers for me from yeah. this six iron. For you, you're spinning your... Um, Six iron at 4,700, which is about which is right. About you're about right. the I'm number. Slightly, slightly spinnier than you. Yeah, it? I would so. say you're an, the number to almost 500 above. Oh, yeah. So that is slightly less, but not too crazy, not too bad for you. So, I mean, it's a powerful six iron, isn't it? Yeah. But the loft is where our five iron is, and the length is probably where our five iron is. Mm. So, you know, it, it's doing what I would expect it to do from a power bat. Um, hybrid. We're using that three a hybrid, obviously. You're going two, two, two carry. Average? Yeah, 222 yard carry. That's like your five wood, isn't yeah, that's it? that's scary. That, I mean, that that's is... not far off your three wood. Yeah, that's, I was gonna say it's a carry. To three wood. Um, spinning at 3,000 revs, peaking height at 27, so it's getting up in the air. I'm 208 with the three, so top one at 214. So it's my power hybrid, it's right in at my, power hybrid and I use a 19 degree hybrid so it's kind of doing what my power hybrid does it yeah. kind of makes sense to me spinning at 37 and peak heighting at 30 degrees so you're just getting that kind of flatter one out there with a bit more ball speed 139 to my 134 I mean for me to put that in the bag I'd have to change a lot because my four irons only carrying 200 max yeah 195 to 200 and then I jump to what 222 yeah 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 something's got to go in between isn't it yeah absolutely um, the numbers are good the numbers are strong and powerful like you would expect if you drop club head speeds off this that's where it's going to get appealing for people, I think, because obviously you've got the ideas that we're the longer club head speeds, all that kind of talk. Yeah. So we're higher club head speeds, so maybe we're getting more out of it. Um, it's not designed for our speeds. But Callaway just say all high handicappers, this can benefit. And I think statements like that, I understand why they're in there, because it's a marketing base statement that will appeal to, you know, I'm a high handicapper, I'm going to go and try these, which is fine. But if you're a high handicapper with speed, I teach plenty who swing as fast as me, if not faster, yeah. with launch, you're going to get similar numbers to us. If you're a high handicapper with low speed, the question that I always ask, and I do it with students, is do you want loft ripped away from you? I know they launch up in the air, they do pop up in the air, but I know if I take launch away from my daughter, for instance, uh, it doesn't help, so I give her loft, I give her an iron with more loft than one without. So it's finding that kind of middle ground that'll suit for you. So definitely go and try them out. I think as big irons go, you ain't gonna get a better looking one than this. Yeah. So I think they've done pretty well with this club. It's not gonna be their biggest seller, it's not gonna be for everyone, but certainly if you want good looking club, something that might pop up in the air and it will give you distance, and you're not afraid of spin rates and anything like that, definitely go and give these a try.